Hi everyone, I'm Leonard Maltin and I'm standing in the Walt Disney Archives on the Disney Studio lot in Burbank, California. We have some wonderful things to show and tell today. Joining me is Guy Williams Jr. Leonard, how are you? I'm fine. And I'm also kind of dazzled. I've never seen this in person. Uh, I guess you have. I used to wear it at <laughs> home. Wow. A lot of kids wanted to be you. It was fun being me then. So let's take a look at this beauty. Now, I'm told it's all pretty much authentic, except this appendage to the sash was added for uh, Zorro and Son, the short-lived 80s TV series. It's almost as I remembered it as a kid. And of course, in the 50s, they didn't have all the synthetics that they have today. So I, right. I gathered that these were mostly woolens. Right. And, right. and couldn't have been terribly comfortable, especially shooting in warm weather and doing action scenes. Right, it got hot. Well, let's just explore how many different elements there are to this costume, okay? Well, let's start at the top. There's the hat, which was a Spanish-style hat. Uh, they added a silver band. There was a silver band that went around the, the crown. Back. And then is this a leather... Uh... It's called a stampede strap, just to keep the hat from flying off while they're in the middle of a stampede. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, then we have the cape, which is magnificent. They had different weights for the, for the cape. I think really? uh, the stunt cape was a lot lighter. The one for the close-ups or for the, the on-set work was pretty heavy. As a kid, I remember wondering what this little extra cord was that uh, was hanging down. I could never figure it out. But I later learned that it's to tie off behind the back and up through the shoulder. Because the cape is so heavy, it tends to pull back on the, on the neck. So this would allow it to ride up on the shoulders and hold it there. Now, I'm no expert on capes, but I don't remember ever seeing one that has actually an armhole for the sleeve of the shirt to go through. The slits, yes. They had uh, uh, full movement of the arms through these slits. And uh, I remember when my dad was fencing, the cape would often get in the way. So he'd pull it up and put it over one hand and fence with the other. All right, then we have a black shirt in this case. Right. Uh, with the, are these conks here? Uh, I think there's metal silver buttons. Mm -hmm. Then we have a sash, and then the pants, and then the gloves. They tended to have a silver uh, band around the edges to so it would define it against the costume. These are original gloves from what I understand, but the silver, I think rat tail is what they call it, was removed. Mm -hmm. And then we have boots, and these are not the original boots, but they're here to help give the complete appearance. Right. What on earth are you doing in those ridiculous clothes? How did you know it was me, Excellency? I'm wearing a mask. And then, of course, the mask. Now, this mask doesn't look exactly like the one I I'm remembering. It doesn't. The eyes have been changed, and it's made the same way. Uh, but the eyes on the Disney Zorro mask were a little straighter across the top and came to a, a tight point up in the corner. And is that an original sword we're looking at? It is. A company in Italy called Negrini made the guard. What it was noted for was the, the bevel on the, uh, on the guard itself. But um, you can't find these anymore. Some costumes only seem to come to life when an actor is wearing them. Of course, you, your father just embodied Zorro in so many ways. But even on a mannequin, this costume is powerful. It makes a real statement, doesn't it? It really does. It, it's uh, one of the best Zorro costumes. I think the best Zorro costume that I've ever seen. I remember even during the lead up to the, the shooting, they were working with the costume. Some of the original photographs for publicity were with a little different hat, a little different shirt. So they were evolving just as they were getting ready to shoot. Chuck Keen was in charge of the costume or wardrobe department at the time at the studio, but I understand this costume and the others were actually commissioned from Western Costume Company, which is, the, I think, the oldest costume company in Hollywood. Well, that's Zorro. Should we look at his alter ego, Don Diego? That'd be great. Get your hat. We're leaving for Los Angeles. Now, of course, Zorro was a black and white television show, but that doesn't mean it didn't have color when they were shooting it. And here's a good example of that, this beautiful Don Diego costume. It's funny, I remember as a kid watching it at home in black and white, but in my mind I was transposing it into color because I was familiar with the colors of the costume. Look how well this beautiful wool has held up for over half a century. The shirt and the bandana uh, are not original, but the hat, the jacket, the vest, and the pants are, and they do look great. He was a well-dressed man. Yes. A fine family, good blood. You could do much worse, my son. Well, this befits a gentleman of standing and wealth in the community like Don Alejandro, right? Absolutely. Look at the detail work. These buttons are exquisite. And the silver brocade work also again there. Yes, and again, apparently real silver thread. Yep. 
But I, I, I can't help but feeling you could see this costume in any number of Western films or films set in Spain or old California. We have another costume over here that only could have come from Zorro. Well, you might say we've saved the best for last because this to me is the ultimate Zorro costume artifact. Of course, your father never made a Z quite this big on the show. This uniform was worn in the series by Captain Toledano, played by Peter Adams, but it was later altered with this giant Z for Zorro and son. You no, know, Leonard, I think I may have found something to top that one. Really? You remember Sergeant Garcia, right? Of course. I think I found the most famous, personally inflicted Z from the whole show. <laughs> now, these pants could only have belonged to Sergeant Garcia, especially as played by Henry Calvin. He was a man of ample girth. <laughs> Sergeant Garcia's presence does carry weight. And I should say to all of you that these costumes, most of them, were in the Disney costume inventory for years and years and years. And it wasn't that they were mishandled or mistreated, but they were just sort of sitting there. The good folks at the Disney Archive said, no, 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 we have to pluck these out of inventory and put them on display, save them, restore them, and treat them as what they are, pieces of Disney history. That is an Italian blade, Don Diego. An excellent buy for 30 pesos. Our friends at the Walt Disney Archives have spread out a treasure trove of Zorro merchandise for us, but this is just a sampling, isn't it? Small sampling, yes. I think there were something like 500 licensed items. I think you're right. Well, let's see. Now, we, we could never reassemble all of that today, but they've done a pretty good job. Let's start over here with the Zorro mask and whip. Good yep. for any occasion. And that actually, if I remember correctly, came with a little filament that goes in the end that actually made it crack. Like oh, a neat. Dental floss or something. Neat. And there's an approximation of Zorro's hat and a very small cape. <laughs> and those are kind of cuffs, aren't they? The gauntlets. Uh, gauntlets. Right. Very nice. Now, of course, every <clears throat> red blooded kid had a lunchbox. Here are two different models for any taste. And there's the thermos that would go inside the lunchbox. Very nice. Which you could drop the first day out and it would break. And That's right. The thermoses didn't last they quite didn't last as long as long. the lunchbox. The lunchboxes are kind of indestructible. That's right. Now, here's something I've never seen a Zorro necktie. I would have thought this would be a bandana territory, but they call it a necktie. And what, what kind of gun would you call that? Uh, it's a replica of a, the flintlock that they used for the period. Um, I don't know if it was technically accurate for the period, but that's what they used. And, and to make sure you understand that it represents Zorro, there is a decal to tell you so. Here's a less lethal looking gun. This shoots water, right? That, that appears to be what that is, yes. But were there six shooters on Zorro? I don't think so. I think that may have been a piece of merchandise left over from another, <laughs> another production. Now here are not one, not two, but three different styles of Zorro wall, all made from the finest quality vinyl. To fit your fashion of the day. That's right. And uh, uh, play sets, wonderful figures. Those are really, really fun. I like that. What better incentive could a kid have to drink his milk than to hold the handle shaped like a Z? That's really cool. Here we have rings, an entire uh, store display of Zorro Signet rings. Very, very nice. Now, do you ever remember trying out these Zorro roller skates? Well, everyone, I think, who was from my era will remember these skates because they had the metal wheels that had a particular sound on the sidewalks. And if you could hit it just right and get one of those wheels to stick, it just like nails on a blackboard. But uh, <laughs> a lot of memories with those skates. And some nice plastic uh, cutout figures here. These are, these are inventive, too. Puffy plastic, <laughs> as we might call them. And a nice frame tray puzzle. That's a beautiful color that is shot, a good, isn't it? Good picture. The other place you could see Zorro in color, of course, was on your Viewmaster. 3D. Uh, I don't know anybody who didn't have a Viewmaster kit back then. And that, there's a really nice display of the Zorro set. Last, but far from least, the Zorro comic books. Again, the cover photography just made these irresistible. And some of the stories were drawn by Alex Toth, one of the great comic book artists, mm -hmm. but it's the covers that really sell them. And there's even one with guest star from second season, Annette Funicello. Who had a huge crush on my dad at the time. And that was actually Walt's 16th birthday present to her to uh, include her in, I think it was two or three episodes. Pretty cool. Do you have any recollections of particular toys or products that, that, that you cherish from that time? There were two. There was the chalk tip sword, and there was a tent that was a canvas tent with a metal frame that you could put together and put out in the yard, and you could play like you were inside uh, Zorro's secret lair, jump out with your sword. 
great. You even okay. posed for a series of pictures with your dad uh, to promote some of this merchandise. At uh, Disney Studios, in fact, while my dad was changing into his costume, I went into Walt's office and he had this huge box of all of this stuff and, and more and started pulling the things out while we were waiting uh, one by one and we were going through them all. And we did a photo shoot displaying gosh, most of the items. And uh, the next day, that big box showed up at the house on the front door. And uh, so I had all, all of this stuff. It was, it was great. I knew that was special back then, even. I'm so glad we had a chance to look at this. I am, too. Brings but back a lot of memories. I know, but you have memories that we'll never match. I mean, memories involving not only your dad, but Walt Disney himself. Right. That's right. hard to top. Yeah, it's, it, that's special in my memory. I'll always, always enjoy that.